The everyday person aware of Lufthansa likely thinks of it as being an expensive, more luxury airline. But among more frequent flyers and flight reviewers, Lufthansa is more commonly considered an expensive, but not great airline. Today I review Lufthansa for the first time, and form my own opinions as I fly their A319's economy class to Frankfurt. Before I continue, bear with me as I provide this disclaimer. This is not a positive review, but rather a negative one. So if you prefer positive reviews, I suggest you check out one of my other videos. This video is based on my opinion and my best recollection including notes I made at the time of this flight. I try my best to fact check everything, but I cannot guarantee everything is correct. This video is about my experience specifically, and doesn't necessarily reflect on Lufthansa as a whole. Welcome to Munich Airport. I just arrived after a flight on Swiss A320, and I now have a tight connection to catch my next flight. I wasn't supposed to be taking this flight, but Lufthansa cancelled my previous direct flight from Zurich to Frankfurt and rerouted me via Munich. I explain more about that in my Swiss A320 review. Anyway, we've got a tight connection to make my next flight. According to the departure board, my next flight departs from a gate 14 minutes away. Munich Franz Josef Strauss International Airport was opened in 1992. The airport has two main terminals. Terminal 1 was originally opened with the airport in 1992. Terminal 2, on the other hand, was opened in 2003, and a satellite terminal extension of Terminal 2 was opened in 2016. This is where my inbound flight parked. To get from the satellite part of Terminal 2 to the main part of Terminal 2 where my next flight departs from, I'll have to take a shuttle train. Normally about now is the time I'd tell you a bit about the airline I'm flying. In this case, Lufthansa. But there's a lot of other things to talk about and not much airport footage, so I'll save it for another time. By the way, as far as I noticed in the short amount of time I spent at this airport, there's a decent amount of duty-free restaurants and shopping. After a decent walk, I've arrived at my gate, where boarding had already started. From memory, I wasn't assigned to a specific seat when I collected my boarding pass in Munich for this flight, so I had to collect a new boarding pass and find out what seat I'd been assigned to once I got to this gate. The gate staff were very well organised and helpful. I was assigned to a window seat, which I was happy about. Anyway, it's now time to board. I love the automatic boarding pass scanners that are used here and at a lot of airports around Europe. There's my ride to Frankfurt, Delta Alpha India Bravo Hotel. A 2012 built Airbus A319-112 delivered new to Lufthansa. This aircraft is painted in a Star Alliance special livery. Hello. Welcome on board Lufthansa's A319. Featuring 138 Recaro BL3520 NEK slimline seats. A modification of the BL3520 seat made specifically for Lufthansa. There's a dynamically sized European style business class cabin at the front, where rather than having different seats, the middle seats are just blocked. Then there's the economy class cabin where I'll be seated as per usual. I will note I thought it smelled a bit old inside the plane. Another observation I made was that it was a little on the darker side on board as not all of the lights were turned on. My seat for this short flight will be 9A. The cushion on my seat was a little bit out of place. Luggage also under the seat in front of you, but this does not apply to passengers in the emergency exit rows 1 and 10. Thank you. Now let's take a quick look at the seat features. Firstly, legroom is about 30 inches, which is pretty okay. There's a seat back pocket here for your personal items. Then there's a standard tray table which can be moved back and forth, but it's not foldable. Above that you've got a literature compartment, which contains a sick bag or two, a safety card, a shopping magazine and a buy on board menu. There's no proper headrest, very limited seat back padding and there's no recline. However, there are coat hooks. The overhead panel does contain individual adjustable air vents. So overall, while the legroom is decent, the trade off is the padding, which really lacks. And so it's overall a pretty uncomfortable seat, except for the legroom which is quite alright. Now before we push back, let's take a look at the menu. The buy on board menu seemed to have a solid selection, but maybe not quite as good as on Swiss. But Lufthansa's menu does seem a bit cheaper. Lack of loading personnel, so the loading will take another 20 to 30 minutes. And 
uh, we hope that you will be happy in Frankfurt arriving with your luggage other than be 20 minutes earlier. If there's any change in the time of departure, I will give you a short information. Otherwise, I wish you a pleasant stay on board. Well, I would rather arrive in Frankfurt with my luggage than avoid a bit of a delay, but my luggage has already been left behind. It sounds like we've got a bit of a delay due to lack of staff. Here I spotted a slightly broken seat. By the way, during the time on the ground, the cabin was kept at a nice warm temperature. The expected flight time to Frankfurt will be 35 minutes, and together with my colleagues, I wish you a pleasant stay on board now. Meine Damen und Herren, und nur noch ein paar Hinweise zu Ihrer Sicherheit. It's now time for pushback, 33 minutes behind schedule. It's now time for takeoff on runway 26 right. in the air, let's take a look at Lufthansa's Flynet onboard Wi-Fi system. While there didn't seem to be movies or anything like that, the portal did contain a moving map feature which I appreciated. As for the Wi-Fi itself, free messaging was offered, but you needed to have a miles and more frequent flyer number, otherwise messaging would cost 3 euros, or a high speed internet connection capable of streaming costed 6 euros, which even though it's a short flight is a reasonable price. Here's a very quick peek at the shopping magazine. As soon as the seatbelt sign was turned off, the crew started making preparations to come around and offer bottled water. I was expecting to get bottled water considering Lufthansa is a full service airline. Not getting anything else is understandable considering it's a short domestic flight. Starting our approach, can you make sure that electronic devices and hand baggage are again stored correctly for landing? Please take your seat again and fasten your seatbelt. Make sure that your seatbelt is upright, your table is folded away and the window shade is open. Thank you. And with that, we're all ready descending into Frankfurt, and so I'll start my conclusion and rant. My journey today started in Shanghai, where I flew on Swiss A340 to Zurich. Thankfully, my baggage made it onto this flight. 
I arrived in Zurich still thinking I was flying with Lufthansa direct to Frankfurt, and my baggage was labelled accordingly. But when Lufthansa cancelled my flight from Zurich to Frankfurt, there was still over an hour until my new flight was to depart, and so I expected that Lufthansa would sort out transferring my baggage. I should mention I wasn't even supposed to be flying via Zurich in the first place, but Lufthansa also cancelled my direct flight from Shanghai to Zurich. This was a while before departure. And so rather than the new direct Lufthansa flight proposed, which departed almost 13 hours later, I chose to fly Swiss to Zurich and then Lufthansa to Frankfurt, as this worked better with my plans that were already in place. That was all fine, as Lufthansa's Australia call centre was happy to help with that, so that was just a minor inconvenience. But my point is, when it comes to Lufthansa flights I have opted to book, I have a 0% success rate with them actually departing. When I was notified about my flight cancellation, I was told in two separate emails what my new itinerary was, one for each flight. I got confused by this and I'm not sure why it wasn't clearly communicated in one email. Anyway, my Swiss flight was okay, but my baggage wasn't loaded onto that flight. Moving on to the flight featured in this review, I was left with little time to make my connecting flight in Munich, and so rushed to make this flight. Thankfully, the gate staff seemed to be well aware of what was going on and so were organised and helpful. Lufthansa's A319 didn't feel dirty or broken or anything like that, but it did feel as though it was starting to get a little old. This was my first time on an A319, and as was expected, it just felt like a bit of a cosier A320. The seats do have okay legroom, but there's a real lack of padding making the seat back quite uncomfortable, and I can imagine my back getting sore if this flight was more than a couple hours. Anyway, normally I wouldn't mind so much about a delay, but the delay due to lack of staff was a bit frustrating considering I had been awake for over 21 hours already. Lufthansa had been experiencing many staff strikes earlier this year, but I wasn't aware of any at this time, so I don't know what was going on. Anyway, in the air service was pretty much as expected. We'll soon park at Frankfurt Airport about 25 minutes late. Once on the ground in Frankfurt, I received an email from Lufthansa informing me that my baggage had not been loaded. This was the final nail in the coffin, so to speak, for me to decide that I did not like Lufthansa, rather I really disliked them. The way my delayed baggage was handled was both good and bad. When I got to Frankfurt Airport, I went to the baggage service desk to see if they could offer any additional help on top of what was said in the email, but they just sent me and many other angry customers away. Not sure if they were closed, or if they just couldn't be bothered to deal with the angry customers. I noted that they idi kalpad, not sure what that was supposed to mean. Anyway, the baggage service desk was a letdown, but thankfully Lufthansa has a system in place for lost baggage. Not just a feedback form, but a full-on system for delayed baggage. Now this is a good thing, because it's easier to file a delayed baggage report. But on the other hand, I suppose this must happen often enough if they have such an extensive system for it. And, uh, these TripAdvisor reviews speak for themselves. I'm not cutting out good reviews, this is just how the page appears. I was only staying in Frankfurt for the night, and so at least I was able to get my baggage sent to my next destination. By the way, email communication was good. My baggage got to me two days later, or about 36 hours, which isn't too bad in terms of time. Now I can't say if this was Lufthansa themselves, or Swiss, or airport employees, but either way my baggage arrived looking like it had been thrown around a bit, but nothing too bad. But one of my family's bags arrived with a broken zip, but again, I can't say if this was Lufthansa or not. As for compensation, as far as I can tell, all I'm entitled to is reimbursement for what I had to spend on clothing and stuff while my baggage was delayed, but I didn't know this at the time and so bought as little as possible. As of writing, I have been informed I will be reimbursed something. I'm not yet sure how much, but I'm guessing it will only be for the receipt provided. I'm hoping to get more just for the inconvenience of the whole thing, but I doubt I will. I'll keep you updated in a pinned comment. Anyway, overall I had a pretty terrible experience on Lufthansa. I would like to stress that while I was very unimpressed with Lufthansa, safety is the number one priority and at least I didn't feel as though that was an issue. Still though, after reading some other reviews, I am under the impression that the kind of experience I had on Lufthansa is not that uncommon, and I really hope they make some big improvements in their cabin product and particularly their customer service. With all of this in mind, I would definitely not recommend Lufthansa, rather I suggest you steer clear of them unless there's no other option. I personally would only fly them again if it's the only option, or to get on the likes of the A340-600 or 747, and if I did fly them again, I would consider packing spare clothes in my carry-on. Thanks for listening, or if you skipped here, thanks for not clicking off the video. It was either that long rant or many, many small ones over the course of my last few videos. 
Now enjoy the rest of the approach and landing on Frankfurt Airport's runway 25 left. As we disembarked, the crew offered Lufthansa branded chocolates, which was nice. We've got a bus gate today, which means, well, we have to take a bus. But it also means great views of our plane upon disembarkation. I would like to take this time to thank you all so much for watching today's video. I'm sorry it wasn't a very positive one. A like and subscription if you enjoyed would help me out a lot and would really help the channel grow. But if you don't want to, that's okay too. Feel free to check out my Instagram at aviation763 underscore where I shared updates on this trip. Last but most certainly not least, thank you to all of my incredible Patreons who helped to make these videos possible. Their support is truly so much appreciated and it means a ton to me. Once again, thank you all so much for watching, I hope you have an amazing day, and I look forward to hopefully seeing you in my next one, which is another very exciting one and will be published next Saturday at 5pm Melbourne time.